Back in the 50s, people were very snobbish about silent films. They told me they were badly photographed because the people didn't know how to do it properly. And the acting was ridiculous, terribly over the top. And um, I must say, it didn't coincide with what I was looking at as examples of films from as early as 1916. Um, also, they were always supposed to be accompanied by a tinny piano. And I quickly discovered that the big films in the big theatres had symphony orchestras. In fact, in New York, the Strand Theatre had 101 musicians uh, with a Wurlitzer organ <laughs> as well. Um, but many of these people had been kids at the time and they did get the tinny piano. Uh, it was the, the adults got the, the orchestras. Um, and some of the music was specially composed for silent films. They had very fine composers. So the more I found out about it, the more impressive it all was. And years and years later, I was fortunate enough to work on a television series about this period. And the company put on, after the series, they put on in big theatres in London, a silent film every Lon at the London Film Festival with a, a newly restored silent film with a score, sometimes a new one, sometimes the original. And th that became extremely popular, for, ran for practically 20 years until a new man took over the television company and decided he hadn't thought of it and scrapped it. But it was, uh, it, it was great while it lasted. Also, you have to concentrate much more on silent films. You have to create the sounds yourself and supply the voices yourself. Uh, this was why when some silent actors played in talking pictures, people were disappointed because the sound wasn't as good as the sound they had in their heads. So you became part of the creative process and therefore it meant much more to you. As with um, opera and ballet, the things that are missing, you provide. But also it was the most powerful form, the most powerful medium in the world, exceeding even that of the press. The, um, you could, by simply altering the titles, you could export a silent film all over the world. And people in an African jungle were as familiar with Charlie Chaplin as those in um, Los Angeles. I've always thought that silent films should coexist alongside talking pictures and there's no reason why they shouldn't. They give you just as much entertainment value and quite often were even more spectacular than you could, the modern budget would extend to. Um, and I certainly think these festivals are an ideal way of getting them back to the people. Um, the only problem is they are expensive to mount and the people who should have looked after them and didn't suddenly discover that they own the copyright and you will kindly pay them large sums of money for the privilege of showing films which they haven't looked after properly <laughs> and archives and private collectors have done all the work for them. And that's very ironic and irritating. But it's, it's worth it because there's no, the, the, the DVD revolution is making them much more uh, accessible. But the people who decide what goes on DVD look at the bottom line, find silence don't sell like um, Steven Spielberg films. And consequently, they don't bother with them. So it's only the dedicated small companies that bring them out and they certainly do need uh, encouragement.
Do you think that the internet revolution, the way that we can now broadcast through so many different channels, therefore we are no longer constrained by, by the couple of media companies, uh, and the fact that you are usually one-to-one, -one, like with a book? The tra but that's, that isn't cinema. Cinema is what we had in there, a room packed with people sharing the same experience. It isn't looking at a television set, one or two people. Um, helpful as that is, how often have you seen a film like that, then seen it in the cinema on the big screen and had a totally different experience? I remember when we were doing The Thief of Baghdad with Douglas Fairbanks as one of the big films with a live orchestra. We did a silent rough tape and sent it down to the publicity people so they would have something to base their ideas on. And privately they all said, Blimey, they must be nuts wanting to show this. It's so boring. Then, 2,000 people gathered in front of the screen. A 40, 50 piece orchestra began to play Rimsky Korsakov, and this amazing film took place. And these same people said that's one of the most remarkable films we've ever seen. Just as comedy is funnier when you have an audience and you can watch a comedy all by yourself and not laugh at all. And it's pointless, isn't it? It is a shared experience. And, and that's why this is, this is so ideal. There are some superb musicians, and, and we had a couple this weekend who, as you say, it's a unique experience, and they give you a fantastic emotional impact. King Vidor, that great director of the big parade, said music is 50% of the emotion of a silent film, and that's what we depended on. But if you have modern music, which doesn't provide any emotion except irritation, um, you're not going to have the same effect at all. Unfortunately, there are many silent film screenings and festivals uh, in which they don't think they've done their work unless they have found some group that has never played for silent films before. I remember seeing Battleship Potemkin in Trafalgar Square with the Pet Shop Boys, which is hardly the group you'd think of for an Eisenstein film. <laughs> it has the most magnificent score by Edmund Meisel, which Eisenstein himself said, that is the score I want for this film. But they didn't take any notice of what Eisenstein wanted, and they gave us the Pet Shop Boys. Now, I have to admit that in that case, it brought a huge audience, but we suffered. Well, one um, fellow brought a restoration of Metropolis to the public, um, and I can't remember the, I think they had, he had it was all rock music, and I can't remember who the singers were, but he actually had singing, singing in silent films, and oi. Because <laughs> the moment you start putting words, you notice the lack of them. And you don't notice that when you have music. But as soon as somebody starts singing, suddenly the fact that people are going becomes, you can't, it gets in the way of your enjoyment.